Welcome back everybody. We're now in problem 8 and it asks, at North High School the number of students taking French, and let me underline that, is decreasing by 20 students per year. And the number of students taking, the number of students taking Spanish is increasing by 10 students per year, right? So this year 250 students are taking French and 100 students are taking Spanish. Which of the following equations could be used to find the number of years n until the number of students are, is the same in both courses? So we're searching for them to be the same in both courses. And let's just see what happens. Well, let me write down years over here. Years, year maybe. And then French, French, and Spanish, right? Spanish. So what happens in the first year? First year. Well, let me write those down actually, second year, third year, and fourth year. And it keeps on going, of course, you have infinite years. And then in the first year you have 250 students taking French, as it says over here. 250 students are taking French. Well, what happens in the second year? Well, they decrease by 20, so that's 230 students taking French. And in the third year, well, it's 20 less, so that's 210. And in the fourth year, you can imagine that's 190. So a pattern starts to pop up, you know, each year you decrease the number 250 by 20 students. So what happens if you want to get to the fourth year? Well, you say 250 minus 20 to get the second year, minus 20 to get to the third year, minus 20 to get the fourth year. So how many times do we uh, subtract 20? And that's three because three years have passed. So this formula actually appears and that is 250, which is the initial number of students, minus, because the students decrease, 20, which is the number of students that we subtract each year, or the number of students that le the class has less every year, by n, which is the number of years that have passed. So in three years, from the first to the fourth year, you'll, you'll decrease the number of students by 60, because that's 20 multiplied by 3, because three years have passed, right? Well, the same thing happens to the number, to the number of students taking Spanish, and that's 100 years initially over here. And then what happens to them? Well, they get to 110, they increase, 120 then, and then 130. And you can see that the same formula applies, except this time they increase. So if you have 100 students initially, you add 10 by the number of years that, that have passed. So that's 10. And if three years have passed, for example, to get to the fourth year, you add 10 multiplied by 3. So you get 130 because you add 10 students every year. So what the question asks is, what is the, well, find the equation for this, for the students to be the same in both courses. So for those, for the students taking French to be equal to the students taking Spanish at a given year, 250 minus 20n, and that's the number of students taking French at a given year, has to be equal to the number of students taking Spanish at a given year, and that's given by this formula, right? So this is the answer to a problem, right, over here. Let me circle that. So the correct answer, let me write this down, correct answer is A. A. So problem 9 states that if y is equal to x to the third minus 1.5, for what value of x is y equal to 2? And if we just substitute y is equal to 2 over here in this equation, we're going to find for what value of x this is actually true. So that gives us 2 is equal to x to the third minus 1.5. And remember, we just substituted y is equal to 2 over here in this equation. So if we add 1.5 on both sides of the equation, we get that 3.5 is equal to x to the third. And that's the same thing as x to the third is equal to 3.5. So x is equal to the third root of 3.5. And let's just use our calculator to find what this is. So the first time I looked on the calculator, I didn't know what the value, uh, where to find the third root of any number. And it, as it turns out, it is on the math menu over here. And it's the fourth option right here. So let's just click 4. And we get the third root. And we want to find the third root of 3.5. Let's just click Enter. And we get that that is 1.51829 and some more stuff, which is actually option C. It's closer to option C. But let me just show you a nice little tip that's going to follow you for the rest of your life. And it's really useful, basically. So 
In order to find the root of any number, you just have to raise it to the inverse number of the root that you're asking for. And I don't know if that made any sense, but let's just go ahead and see with a visual example. So 3.5, and you just raise it, as I said, to the inverse number of the root that you're looking for, and that is 1 divided by 3. 1 third is the inverse of 3, right? So if you wanted to find the 50th root of a number, you could just raise it to 1 over 50. If you wanted to find the 3 fifth root of a number, you could just raise it to 5 thirds. So let's just click enter, and you can see we get the exact same value. So hopefully that will be useful to you some at some point in your life. And so the correct answer is C. I'm just circling. So correct answer. Correct answer is C. So problem 10 goes this way. The length of a rectangle is four times its width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 40 centimeters, what is its area? So let's just make a quick rectangle over here, just to depict that. And if the width is x, right here, well the length, how much is that going to be? Well it's going to be 4x, because it's 4 times the width, right? And we know that this side is also 4x, and this side is also x, because they're opposite to each other, and this is a rectangle, right? So the perimeter we know is 40 centimeters. And what is the perimeter equal to in terms of x? Well, it's 4x plus x, that's 5x, plus 4x, that's 9x, plus x, so it's 10x. So the perimeter, which is 40 centimeters, is equal to 10x. And if we just divide both sides of the equation with 10, we get that x is equal to 4 centimeters. So we now know that the width is equal to 4 centimeters. And we know that the length is equal to 4 times 4 centimeters over here, which we found x is. So that's 16 centimeters. Now in order to find the area, all we need to do is just go ahead and multiply the width by the length. And that is 4 times 16, that is equal to 64 centimeters squared. So the correct answer, let me just write it over here, correct answer is E. So problem 11 says, the function j, where jt is equal to 0.066t plus 0.96, can be used to represent the relation between grade point average jt and the number of hours t spent studying each week. Based on this function, a student with a grade point average of 3.5 studied how many hours per week? Well, what this question tells us is that I have a function. And you have to give it some input t, which is the number of hours a student has studied. And I'm going to give you the grade that the student is going to get. But since we know how the function works, we can also tell it, you know, I know what the student has as a grade point average. I just want to find out how many hours he studied. And since the grade point average is jt, we, we need jt to be equal to 3.5. But jt is equal to 0.066t plus 0.96, so that is equal to 3.5. And in order to solve this for t, we just need to subtract first, let me write this down, uh, 0.96 from both sides, so that's going to be equal to 3.5 minus 0.96. And t, if we divide both sides of the equation by 0.066, is going to be equal to 3.5 minus 0 0.96 divided by 0 0.066. And now so that we don't make any errors, we can just go ahead and try to solve this with our calculator. So let me open up the calculator. And that is equal to 3.5 minus 0 0.96. And all this divided by 0 0.066. So what do we get? We get 38. 48.4848. So the correct answer is D, which is actually 38.5, but it's the one closest to what we found. So correct answer, correct answer is D.